Hey, this is Chavo Guerrero Jr., and I'm in the Wrestling Center. Viva la raza! You're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio, featuring the interactive interview, courtesy of WrestlingEpicenter.com. So what you gonna do? Let me talk to you, dummies. Oh, yeah. You're where it's at. If you're smart like me, you gotta listen. And if you don't listen to it, I'll come out of your computer and body slam your ass. Don't be a Melvin. I will scar you. <laughs> Open your third eye. Woo! It's gonna be cool. Oh, what a rush. It's showtime! We had a lovely conversation. <laughs> to the interactive interview. Interactive wrestling race. Boy, was it a busy week last week here at the Wrestling Epicenter, and because we had so much content leading into Impact Wrestling's Slammiversary, which, by the way, was one hell of an event, we held off on posting these three tremendous interviews with Lucha Underground talent. We recorded these interviews back at comic con on friday live over the phone with three of the top stars of lucha underground those stars include producer and wrestling legend chavo guerrero jr as well as taya valkyrie who ironically enough also works for impact wrestling and pj black who many remember best as justin gabriel from his wwe run we had him on a year ago Uh, And did a sensational piece, actually, with him. So if you haven't heard the original, go back. In fact, we had Taya on back in, gosh, I guess that was about October or September or October, thereabouts. Did a good piece with her as well. And this is a good catch-up for both of those guys. But this is the first time both of those performers, Taya's not a guy, uh, (laughs) um, this is the first time we've had a family member of the Guerreros on our show, and that sounds crazy to say. Uh, we were actually scheduled for the book tour, uh, Stealing Life, Cheating Death book that Eddie Guerrero did. We were on that book tour, and then the inevitable happened. So we never got Eddie on, and we never had Chavo Sr. on, thanks to another wrestling podcast which no longer exists uh, so this is the first Guerrero we've ever had on our show. I've spoken to Chavo a few times before. I spoke to Chavo's mother. I have a day job, or had a day job, uh, working for 1-800-Flowers, and she called from the UPS line, uh, and we ended up doing a business transaction over the phone. And once I figured out who she was, she kept spelling Guerrero, and I said, yeah, like the wrestlers. And she said, well, that's my son, Chavo. And I said, oh, my gosh. Uh, amazing conversation cool little story about her um she told me a story that she holds or hangs a picture an eight by ten signed of eddie on her living room wall um she asked him for it and he said you're crazy you're like my mom and she said i don't care i want you to sign it and now she says it's one of her prized possessions pretty cool backstory there chavo one of the producers of lucha underground hope you guys enjoy this incredible interview And I hope you guys check out everything we do promoting Lucha Underground this week here at the Wrestling Epicenter. And stay tuned for more. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, this is the intrepid traveler, Paul London, and you're listening to the Epicenter. Available now in the archives at interactivewrestlingradio.com. It's our exclusive interview with the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. So no, I, I, we respect each other in the ring and what we've done. And there's a respect there. And, there, and even though if you would say something, Daddy kept coming back to that respect thing. Uh, people had told me, but there's a respect there. But it's, a, it's business. Business is business with me and him. This classic 2005 interview can be heard at WrestlingEpicenter.com and InteractiveWrestlingRadio.com. Four. 
Welcome back to Interactive Wrestling Radio right here on WrestlingEpicenter.com as we are humbled to be welcomed by a member of the Guerrero Wrestling family, Chavo Guerrero Jr. Mr. Guerrero, are you with me? I am here. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right. So I, I know we're here to talk about Lucha Underground. It's a pleasure to have you, by the way. I told you this on Twitter many, many years ago, but I'm going to tell you this now. Um, I once spoke to your mother when I was working at 1-800-Flowers, and she was the brightest spot of my year at work. The coolest person ever. We talked about the family. It was awesome. Yes, sir. That's cool. Yeah, she's, she's a very good lady, man. Good lady. All right. So Lucha Underground Season 4 is in full swing. And you are back in the ring. You're back reinstated after that... A brief stint with potential retirement. Thoughts on being back in the ring in Lucha Underground Season 4? You know what? I, I always love getting into the ring. All the stuff that I'm kind of doing right now, a lot of it is behind the camera, which I do love that also. And I actually really go into uh, loving how to um, create, you know, behind the camera. But, you know, you still have that itch every once in a while. So I kind of get to itch it and scratch it every once in a while from, uh, from Lucha Underground. And, we back in the ring. I'll come in. I'll do a couple, a couple of matches. I can step out and do uh, behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> you know, very cool. And what is the extent of your behind the scenes stuff? What is your exact title there? So Lucha Underground. I am. Uh, I produce the show. So in Hollywood, wow. producing, get, getting a producing credit. Um, sometimes you're just introducing two people to each other and they give you a producing credit, and sometimes you're hands-on on everything. And it just seems like here with Lucha and Down, I'm like on hands-on on everything. Like especially the first season. The first season was definitely, man, I was doing stuff with you know set design and with costumes and and involved with some writing and agenting and then still wrestling. And then helping out the director, showing them how, because a lot of these guys had never done wrestling before, and, you know, obviously I had. So um, after, you know, the first season, that kind of went away because everybody was, they, they picked it up so fast. They're so good at, at their job. So um, I just went down to just kind of about just produce a show, really, which that is um, my title. I guess I'm supervising producer, which means... Uh, I'm kind of supervising other producers. <laughs> and, uh, I, man, I think I'm just there hands-on to all the shows, you know, really, and just explaining, you know, in production meetings and explaining what the writers, basically the writers are writing stuff, and I'm kind of giving that to the to the wrestlers and and, tr and translating it to the wrestlers. And then, you know, I'm involved in agenting matches and column matches and, um, you know, different interviews and stuff. So you just, you're really just, hands off a lot of things to be honest all right well one of the things i love about lucha underground is it's radically different it's not your average wrestling show and i love that about it it's something i really <clears throat> it really excites me as a wrestling fan it kind of has the best of all the elements the big characters as well as the great wrestling not everybody loves it some of the veterans don't love the cinematic approach what is your uh, take on what you guys are putting out there and, and the reaction to it Man, I, I felt that, that wrestling had almost gotten a little stale, that it was kind of the same thing over and over again. And then you have, you know, WWE, who's the, basically the Coca-Cola of wrestling, and if you try to create another, the same product, another cola, you're just a knockoff. You're like an RC cola. So what I love with Lucha Underground, what we did was we created a whole new product, a whole new drink, basically, and, you know, kind of put something else out there and... and you, that's I'm just so proud of the of the product, man. I love it. I, mean, I don't think you can touch our wrestling. You can't touch our production. You know, I, I just think we're the best wrestling show on TV. To be honest, I really do. I tend to agree with that. Actually, I really do love the show. It, it kind of brought me back into it when I was getting disheartened with everything. I I, I told everybody that I told talked to Lucha Underground about this. It was the Evil East and Mil Mortez match that we kind of watched and went. Wow, that was like the most out of this world thing that I've never seen before, and it just exactly. brought you right in. So, man, you guys are doing something. So, special. so you were a fan for a long time, and all of a sudden, you just saw something you had never seen before, which is something. That means we're doing something right. So many times, that it's so easy to imitate and to copy something that you've already, you know, use a formula that's already working great. But for us to step out of the box and kind of create this new product. 
and still have people that really like it. That, that, that's, that's, that's really cool. It's really special. All right. I have a goofy question for you that I wrote late last night. It's one of those things that might have made sense then, doesn't make sense now, but I'll ask anyway. So let's say you, you are, you must who have been, has you the must better... Have been high or something. <laughs> no, no, I get up at 4 a.m., so late at night for me is like 10 o'clock at night. Gotcha. All right. So the question is, who has the better strange mascot? Yourself with Pepe the Stick Horse or, or Ricky Mandel's crazy talking doll? Wow, you know, it's almost like he took my stick horse and made it, it just like Russell, he made it, he evolved it because that that's pretty, so he went kind of creepy with it, you know. I mean, I think Pepe, I just, I'm just riding it around the ring and hitting people with it. He's got something actually talking to it and, and uh, you know, <laughs> doing some other things, you know. <laughs> Excellent. You're also involved in GLOW. Uh, I think yeah, season sure. two is getting ready to start soon with uh Net it started. Netflix, am i correct it started it's already it started, started man we're already number one should win the number one show on, on netflix and season one's up for 10 emmys so yeah we're, we're, we're all right we're doing good that's cool I've, i have seen season one i've not watched season two yet i've evidenced by the fact i didn't know it was out but i have seen season one and i'm looking forward to season cool. two i'll have to uh, get on there and check it out what is your involvement there is it kind of uh, much like this the kind of a uh, master of all um, this one, yes, but it's a different. I'm the wrestling coordinator and the wrestling consultant on the show. And then I also have a little part in season two. Uh, but, um, you know, really what it is here, it's kind of hands-on everything, man, because I'm, I'm the wrestling guy on, on, on set. But, I mean, I same thing. I, just, or I ordered the rings, you know, involved in set design, wardrobe, uh, um, training all the girls. Uh, putting all the matches together, kind of everything to do with wrestling. I kind of I have my hands to hand on all that stuff, you know. So, um, yeah, <laughs> kind of similar to what I'm doing over there at Lucha. Very cool. So, as you probably can tell, I've been watch- if I reference Pepe, I've been watching you for a little while now. Uh, I love but, it. That's awesome. Uh, I wanted to. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you kind of a generic question. Of course, we can spend an hour with you, but I know we have 15 minutes, so I'll kind of give you a generic one. Um, you got WCW you worked in. You were many different characters, including the talent loco, Kerwin White in the WWE. Does anything stand out to you as your favorite thing that you did uh, during your time in WCW and or WWE? Yeah, you know what? Well, I guess, well, the stuff that I always love the stuff that I did with, with Eddie we were so we were so natural together, my uncle Eddie. You know that um, in WCW, the stuff where he was turning me, you know, trying to turn me heel, and I was trying to, you know, stay true to you know my ethics, and I was kind of going a little crazy and stuff. Um, then in WWE, when we were Los Guerreros, and we did a whole life sheet feel, and uh, all that, man. That's to me that really holds a special place in my heart, you know, because I just. Man, it's just a part of cocktails, you know, with Eddie, man. We were just, we were just so, you know, good together. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Excellent. And that's one thing that, that Lucha Underground keeps, even though it's radically different and it's something new. When you're in the ring and you do your tribute to Eddie with the Three Amigos or the Frog Splash, that crowd gets it and they love it. And they, they, they're chanting Eddie right along with everybody else. Yeah, you know what? They, people always still remember Eddie so much, and they are, they 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 just have that connection with him, you know. And it's something that he really touched everybody's hearts. Um, and you know, in his passing, really uh, affected a lot of people. So um, I had a lot of people that come up to me and say, you know what? I stopped watching wrestling when he passed away. So um, that's definitely something that that um, it's very special, man. It's still to this day, I just point up and. People just start chatting Eddie. That's awesome. Two more questions for you, then I'll let you out with the rest of your day. Oh. I know you said that when you get the itch, you jump in the ring. But do you have any goals for yourself in ring in Lucha Underground Season 4? Um, you know what? Yeah, you know what? There's definitely some, some goals for sure in ring. You know I mean? You always want to capture a championship here and there, you know, uh, but uh, my goal just in, in, in Lucha Underground Season 4 is really just to create, create the best show possible that we can, you know. I, um, 
I don't like watching the show and thinking, God, we could have done better. That's something that I really don't like to do. I always like to kind of be able to watch it and go, okay, hey, that was good. Now i got to top it next week. But um, that, those are really my goals now, man. It's just really getting that best product, the best show out there for our fans. Very cool. Very cool. And um, kind of a question about the scene. The wrestling scene right now is my last question. Lucha Underground did the joint show with Impact Wrestling, which, you know, two, three years ago would have been something unheard of. And now, you know, a lot of those Lucha Underground guys that you see on, on Lucha every week are the biggest stars that Impact Wrestling has. And some of the Impact guys are appearing on Ring of Honor and MLW. Thoughts on how open the wrestling business is right now? And, and as a wrestler, granted, somebody who's not as active as they were a few years ago, but somebody who is a wrestler, what is your take on all these avenues that are open to the wrestlers today? Man, it's a good time to be a wrestler, man. It's really is a great time. Um, it got stale for a bit, and I think it's just coming out of it. You know, it goes through cycles. I think right now it's on an up cycle, man. There's people are watching, you know, they're watching wrestling again. And, you know, you got with, between New Japan and Ring of Honor and Impact Wrestling and WWE and Lucha Underground. You, there's, you know, and all the different like, different Japanese promotions. Man, it's, it's, it's really cool. There's a lot of really good wrestling out there right now. And then... You know, good organizations, uh, you know, going head to head with each other. You didn't see that for a long time. You have WWE talking about doing something when you New Japan. It's like, wow. It's like, you know, they didn't. That that's the way it used to be done back in the day. You know, I remember seeing guys like, you know, when Ric Flair would wrestle um, uh, Bob Backlund. You know, the you know, title versus title, NWA versus WWF at the time. Man, it, you just don't see that anymore. You know, you wouldn't. You're not going to see. You know, whoever the, the WWE champ is, Russian Lucha Underground champion. But hopefully, maybe you will see that in the future, you know. It, the, the only ones that are going to win, really, are the fans. You know, fans, the promoters are going to win, the wrestlers are going to win. It's, 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 it's a win across the board. Awesome. Well, I can't thank you enough for this time. Hey, can I ask for one last favor from you? Of course. You probably can guess what it is. Can I get a station ID just saying this is Chavo Guerrero and you're in the wrestling epicenter? Sure, no problem. Well, yeah, you ready? Yeah, do you want me to do the Wayne's World Countdown in five, four, sure. Sure. three, two? Hey, this is Chavo Guerrero Jr. and I'm in the wrestling center. Viva la raza. Beautiful, man. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thanks, brother. Thank you, man. Good luck. I'm going to give you back to Adriano, okay, brother? This is the Wrestling Epicenter. For over 15 years, we've brought you the top names in professional wrestling for exclusive interviews. Everybody you see here has been interviewed by our site. But we're more than just interviews. So be sure and check out WrestlingEpicenter.com for news, results, information, and of course our store. WrestlingEpicenter.com, your number one source for wrestling information.